yeah. Pull up on the block in a big Corvette, yeah. Riding around the city with a stick all black, yeah. Try with a stove, but we ain't with all that, yeah. Yeah, 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 y
in fairness to Ferguson, you know, he doesn't go in and hit that hard, he doesn't, he doesn't move, but then sure. you have to protect the head at all costs, and it's it's such a it's such a challenging one. Um, I personally, I thought it was going to be a yellow card um, after going through the video footage and some mm. of the some of the thoughts. Um, when it came up as a red, you know, you can they're going through framework. I mean, direct mm. contact with the head with force. Um, one thing that doesn't do Ferguson any any good, any uh, any favors, is that he's come from a distance and yeah. he's got so much time to see it. Um, the video ref uh, mentioned about uh, is he mitigating that he's raising his level. Well. That would suggest that he was aiming even higher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. If he's raising his level, then he was he was aiming towards the top of the head. If that was the case, um, so I think yeah, I, I think that that's not done him any, any good. He's he's got. You could argue that if it's it's a, what an inch, in, inch and a half maybe, uh, slightly slightly lower. He's he's got time. He's got mm -hmm. time. And he can and he can cite that. Would he would he would he be an effective clear out if he'd have gone that much lower? Mm -hmm. Yes, it would have been. Um, so, I don't, I don't, I don't think it, I don't think it helped. Xander Xander Fagerson, he's again a really great player that plays on the line. Um he would have been chatting to Carly throughout the whole match about the scrums, what's going well, what's not going well. So I don't know, maybe and he did give away a few penalties as well, Xander, but it's a massive talking point as well as the kicking grant, which I know you're gonna be taking up a wee bit too. First of all, we'll talk about Darcy Graham's incredible try of oh, really? a cheeky dinky little alley price kick. And it looked like it was kind of like a not so much off a training ground, but just natural, something that just happened. Because I think he kicked off his off foot to think Ali Price. Dead for all, for all intents. It looked offside as hell, but he didn't. <laughs> uh, it was just Darcy too quick. Uh, Lee Halfpenny, I don't know, maybe he was out of position. But to be fair, a skillful bit of play like that, it's going to be hard to defend against, isn't it? Definitely. I think um, one of the one of the sayings, um, one of my, the Matt Prothero's sayings in the, in, the, in the backfield is that you can't cover everything. Um, and that's, yeah. that's so true. I mean, when we're on, when we're watching the TV, we wonder about their positioning and them being out in position. If a kicking game is really effective as a back two player, because they're playing 13 2 defense or even 14 1, as a, in the backfield, you're actually, to get a good kicking game, you're always out of position. Always. Yeah. And that's what Scotland proved today. I thought uh, some of uh, Russell's kicks through. I thought he was he was more finessed with the boot this week. Um, I thought he was a lot more thoughtful with, it, with his kicks going through. I thought Hogg kicked kicked really well. So that that score um, is it is it off the cuff? I mean, the, you you don't coordinate actions just off the cuff. Yeah. It's they, they, that's coordinated. Well, often. See the space, um, top class. I mean, seeing something and executing it. That's so different. Yeah. I mean, the kick is tough. That don't underestimate how hard that catches. Uh, he's at pace, under pressure, knows if he catches it, they're in a wonderful position and really take control of the game. So quality. I, I was uh, I was impressed with that aspect of Scottish play from minute one to well, at least at least minute fifty, uh, when when the game changed. Incredible. Uh, and I think their um their opportunity to progress in the tournament now. You'd be excited. We've seen him against France now. You'd be, you'd be excited. So what, what can they put off against Italy? We, we might see some points there, which would be, I think, massive for, for Scottish rugby. Exactly. We'll see what happens. And obviously, with the kicking game comes your set piece, obviously, and it comes your line out. We had a fantastic line out performance from Scotland last weekend at Twickenham, um, taking them against the head, very solid in their own ones. Today, possibly not so much because of the pressure from the Welsh um, pack, but I didn't think the line outs went too. Amazing today, not so much George Turner throwing, but they just didn't seem as coerced, as coordinated as they were before. No, yeah, no, I totally agree, totally agree. And it was, it, it seemed odd, and they seemed out of sort in that area. Um, but at the same time, these teams are doing so much homework on each other, they yeah. they are studying each other to the nth degree. In fact, Wales went towards the front, so they were thrown to two lords, they tried to drive off two. Didn't really have any other option. Um, mm -hmm. Just the, the overthrow for, for Scotland, with the planned overthrow, uh, which I thought that was quality. Um, but then anything around the kind of four and six in the line out just just wasn't happening. I mean, Wales no. didn't even bother trying it, so it couldn't fail for Wales. They just didn't. They didn't even bother going there. Scotland tried that early on and realised pretty quickly that it it just wasn't going to happen. Um, so yeah. It was, had a big impact, um, and there's some interesting points in the in the comments. It's probably worth uh, picking up on um, some of that. Uh, the kick at the end with with Ali Price. I mean, I was, I was going to I was going to say about that. Grant. I think I think the Scotland players were just out on their arses to go to freeze. Um, I think they're just out because up until that point, I think they'd had three or four minutes of grinding against the Welsh attack. Yeah, he probably shouldn't have kicked. It wasn't the right decision. 
But I think at that point, I think they were just knackered. Um, we were talking about the Lions squad and the Lions team coming up this summer. We had a lot of Lions there today. There was a big build-up to this game saying Wales are decimated by injury, decimated by this. They had a lot of Lions playing today. They had a lot more Lions than Scotland have played today. But in my mind today, uh, Hamish Watson, if he does not, he put another crack of a performance today. If he does not make that play or car journey, depending on where the Lions turns to be, if he does not get on that, then then rugby is done. Hamish was at least be up there. Now, another wee, that might be a wee bowler, who was actually a man of the match today, Zaman. What a player. What a player. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that some, one of the comments earlier on was uh, about the impact of the bench. Um, Zamit was starting. I thought, I thought he was incredible. Um, bringing the players off the bench, then to complement the way that he was playing. Um, it's interesting we say about Watson. Uh, I think he's he's outstanding. I mean, he's right up there with my favourite players to watch. I, I think it's incredible. And yet, I still don't think he'll go on the line still. Uh, and, and that's incredible to say, isn't it? And the reason I think that is then I think, well, what's his competition? He's got some outrageous competition. Uh, I think that the back row in the British Isles, they are, I think, is the most competitive it's been in years. I mean, we've had good good back rowers for a long time, some outstanding individuals like Sam Warburton uh, from the past and kind of your Richard Hills of the past. Uh, yeah. And look at the guys now. I mean, there's, we could probably read off a dozen back rowers who are genuine, yeah. genuine outstanding players. Um, and then you supplement them with those backline players like Rhys Amit. I thought he was incredible, uh, and I, I thought the, the I mean the first try was a it was a standard wingers try. Just yeah. a, you you finish it. That's that's just part of the job. The second one that that pushes it. That, that's that's a different uh, that's a different domain. Uh, a chip over under pressure, right on the edge, comes back in, cool as a cucumber to, to pick and pick and score. Um, and then obviously that kick. I mean that's uh, you can't. You can't pick that that ball's going to dribble out in the 22 uh, at the end of, end of it. But the skill to kick off an edge, he's a, he's a meter away from touchline. Incredible. Exactly, exactly. And guys, if you're joining, if you're enjoying the crack today, make sure to fire up your comments and we'll speak about you. Um, please give this video a like as we're going along, if you like it. If you don't like it, just don't bother, sorry. Um, another player here play, who thought I thought played amazing today, yet again, as he played well last weekend, was Stuart Hogg. Um, again, just like with Zaman, he got a brace of tries. But defensively, he showed a different kind of style to his game as well when he took that second try on. It was a handoff. I think it might be Watkins or something he handed off. And then to take that. And I think the Scotland team, I mean, you're a man down. We saw it last weekend. If if Pierre O'Mahony hadn't been red carded, I would suggest Ireland would have won that match. If Xander Ferguson wasn't red carded today, I would suggest Scotland would have won that match. But you saw Scotland together. They've got they've got more leaders are coming through in their teams just now. This is still a it's still a kind of turning point for Scottish rugby today. But you saw that when they're speaking about the scrums and you had Johnny Gray coming over, you had Stuart Hall coming over, you had Fed Russell coming over, all chatting, Ali Price. Welsh team today, obviously got a great big leader, Alwyn Jones, who's just been Mr. Wales, if you like. Mm -hmm. When he goals and you've got the likes of Tiprick, maybe thinking about his last couple of seasons and things like that, who do you see stepping up as that big leadership role in the Welsh squad? Yeah, well, it's it, it is those kind of guys. I mean, unfortunately, Lydia did a, a bad injury last week, yeah. um, and he's been in the Welsh squad a long time. Uh, he would have been a real natural uh, kind of senior successor, I think, because I, I think he's got another. Probably three or four years left in him. I know he's uh, he's he's in, he's in good nick, other than obviously you know, picking up this injury. Um, then you have got these young guys coming through. You got the you know Gareth Davis is uh, he's he's out the favour at the minute um, as as a scrum half. You got some of the kind of the younger guys coming through. Um, you know, Thomas Williams, solid leadership uh, leadership capabilities. Um, and I think we're we're probably looking for that kind of Jonathan Davis type of character really. That's uh, in, in the back line. Yeah. I mean, like he he would be. He would be a, a, a natural person, somebody who's been there and done it, but still has kind of three or four years. And, and I personally, I, I feel that's the, that's what Wales need in terms of leadership, really, is actually keep some of those guys who've been around for a while, push them into that senior leadership, and then bring these younger guys through. We've got obviously Keelan Hardy playing today. Fantastic to see him mm -hmm. in, in the squad. And so I think, um, yeah, use some of that late on leadership. I, I bring them through. Um, but there's, I mean, there's, there's, uh, Alex is definitely a big, uh, Alex Marshall is a big fan of Stuart Hogg uh, and Elite Finn. I mean, 
I, I agree wholeheartedly, Alex. Uh, I genuinely think Stuart Hogg is he is he's everything you want to see you know, in not just a fullback but in a rugby player. He's got, got everything going for him. Contact, footwork. I mean, he his footwork for the uh, for the first Scottish try was outrageous. It was such a small moment, but he created something from absolutely nothing. I thought I thought he was incredible. And, and Finn, I thought I, I actually thought that's right up there with the best Finn Russell international performances. Um, not hugely extravagant, mm-hmm. but controlled, measured. Passing game was effective, uh, and he, he uses kicks sp- sparingly. And you know, looking at the kick numbers, they're they're really telling. Uh, Scotland in the entire game have only box kicked three times in an mm. entire eighty minute period. So that might be. Yeah. But you think that's down because sorry for interrupting, Grant. Sean Maitland is obviously one of our best aerial guys. Do you think obviously Sean Maitland not being available today? That was a big onus on not so many box kicks. Possibly, um, I think it's. I think it's more a uh, well. There's two things, I suppose. There's one where the where the game was played, um, which obviously means that there's Xbox kicks because uh, Scotland spent a significant amount of time. I mean, at, at about seventy minutes, Scotland had had five minutes and forty in the Welsh twenty-two. I mean, yeah. five minutes and forty. A ball in play time in international rugby is, is about thirty-eight minutes. They spent five, nearly six minutes, and it would have been six minutes by, by the end. In the Welsh 22, that, that is a huge period of time in the Welsh 22. So then that, that'll be one reason there was less box kicks. But then tactically, uh, they were using cross kicks, they were using punts, they used uh, six punt kicks. Tactically, they kicked four times. So uh, huge variety, really. Um, so get into, into good areas and then not feeling that they need to go through that kicking battle, which was you know, balanced by Wales, because really, Wales didn't use a huge number of, uh, of box kicks either. They, they, they've only used four box kicks in the, in the entire game. So... Um, uh, it, it's clear the will, uh, the rugby rather, has taken a it's taken a shift. There's a there's a difference uh, in the way the teams are playing. Um, right, so pick up a couple of more of the comments. Uh, yeah, David Hayes totally agree. Could have gone, could, definitely could have gone either way. Um, I mean, I was uh, I was bit, I was in bits. I'll be honest. I was I was in absolute bits. Uh, I, uh, I I couldn't pick a winner um, in, until right at the end. Uh, it it. it and that's great for rugby, isn't it? It's uh, yeah. not good for either or heart rates, but it's it's fantastic. For the game, I think there's six nations we needed a good one. I think for the Scotland team too, I think as a Scotland supporter, we want to see Big Duhan on the ball a wee bit more as well. You saw when he got the ball, just something happens, whether he takes two, three players with him. And obviously right at the end, when everybody's hearts were in their mouths and we're thinking, can he do it? And then just that last gasp, and it's just like, oh, God. It's... um. It could be that that could this could rank as one of the best games of the Six Nations so far. Best game yet, I would say for the for the neutral. Um, but coming up, we've obviously got next weekend. We're all having a rest, which is crap because we won rugby every weekend. That's fine. We're going to have to do our responsibilities and stuff. Wales obviously taking on England, and Wales are at home. What are Wales going to be? How are they going to be focusing up against that match? Are they going to be looking to change the team much? Are they having these players back in? What's your thoughts about that one? Yeah, massive, massive test. Obviously, um, you know England have, uh, have evolved the game a little. I think um, you know, watching the uh, watching the England Italy game earlier, there was some, there was a, a definitely some progression in the, in the way that they played in that game. Um, a little bit more thoughtful with their kicking game, and then attack was a bit more varied as well. So I think Wales going up against them. I, I think they'll take a very similar approach. I don't see the squad being being too different. Um, but I hope we'll see a bit more of what we saw last week in terms of some of the playmaker balance. Um, I thought the way the half penny played as a as a second receiver and then as a first on splitting the attack outside the field. Mm. Um, I'd like to see more of that, and I thought we missed that today. Um, I thought uh, Liam Williams being, being a full back didn't, didn't offer the, uh, offer the same balance to, to his play. Um, of a massive Liam Williams fan, he's a, he's a fantastic player. Um, but uh, yeah, I think um, I think. He, it would have been nice to nice to see a bit more of that balance, and I'd hope we'd see that for the England game. And obviously, Scotland going forwards now. Um, personally, I've, I've seen a huge development of of the way the Scotland play rugby in that in the last six months or so. I think kind of latter part that, that COVID part of Six Nations, and then the Autumn Nations Cup, completely different team to watch, uh, which, which has been been great. What, what would you say is uh, who do you pick up as your stars today, Halde? Who's who's the guys that really stood out for you? Well, I think we we came into Six Nations obviously with losing <coughs> Stuart McAnally and Fraser Brown, both players who would certainly be in the Lions conversation. Not suggesting they'd be on the plane or whatever, but they'd certainly be in that Lions conversation. Both of them are out. So George Turner, um, 
a relative unknown to lots of people out there that don't really follow the Pro 14 or things. But George, I think, today had a very solid game. I thought Johnny Gray was all over the park. Hamish Watson, I thought Blake Thompson going off quite early was a bit of a, could have been a bit of a turner as well because Blade obviously knows a lot about Welsh rugby and playing there. And he looked quite good. Actually, the injury where he sustained the, the knock, he, he had just broke himself through two or three different uh, tacklers. Uh, when Gary Graham came, came on, how many penalties did he give away? About four penalties or something again? Not the best uh, introduction into that game. Ali Price, I thought, had a strong game. He might have been thinking about the performance he played last weekend. Um, and told you kind of running over him a lot. I agree with you. Finn Russell played excellent. Uh, Stuart Hogg, phenomenal. Elliot and Neve, Wales written off again. 21 players missing and still a win away at Scotland. That'll do. Yeah, that's true. A lot was made about Wales losing so many players. And that's the modern game, isn't it? And we we're speaking about that. Again, from everyone at Rugby Pass, a big um, uh, good luck to Ellis. Um, coming back, sorry, to Willis for his injury they sustained today. Mm-hmm. The crop thing. Um, so hopefully he gets back. But injuries is just a course of, of, the, of the modern game and it's how you deal with it. And I think Scotland now does have that depth where before we would maybe lose Finn Russell, Stuart Hogg, and that would be the end of it. That would be, you know, doomsday. But I think we now have a wee bit more depth in there. And I think that can only get better. George mm-hmm. Turner, perfect example. Third choice hooker or fourth choice hooker, David Cherry coming on and putting in a show. So, guys, I think we're kind of wrapping up towards the end. If you, I'm just going to promote myself. Maybe if you want to follow my own crack, see how I get over a, a hard loss today. You can follow me on Instagram at Harley Pottinger. There might be lots of photographs and videos of me crying, um, throwing leaks around the place and killing dragons and stuff like that. But that's how we're going to be spending my week. And I'll build my, pick myself back up <laughs> as, we, as we attack the French. Uh, Grant, you've got your own socials. You're a busy man with that. Yeah, if you want to catch me on uh, on my Twitter, it's at DavisGDD. Uh, then I've also got a YouTube channel with uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, videos on there, a lot of analysis videos, and uh, quite a few that have gone out from the last last few weeks as well. So check that out, Geraint Davis Coaching and Analysis. So uh, if you click down in the description, you'll see all the links for our socials. Uh, and then please do hit the like button. That, that really helps these uh, these things grow and unless people see them a little bit more. And show, let us know your thoughts as well. Uh, we're always wanting to improve what we do and make sure that you have a good experience post-match. So please do check your thoughts down in the comment section. Uh, subscribe to the Rugby Pass channel and then get over to our socials have a look. Uh, but thank you, everybody. We'll see you again soon.